to do our we try Then make some music before we arrive Get out your banjo and your guitar We're making music in our little blue car If I didn't know better, I'd swear that was the Andrews sisters, minus the overdubbing. Wow. Uh, That's Jennifer Gassoy. She's a singer-songwriter, now a Montrealer, originally from Vancouver. Moved to Montreal, but you said about 10 years ago. Uh, We're sitting and talking during the break here, and I said, wow, look, someone who moved from out west to here. You never hear that story anymore. You really don't. I think there's maybe two or three of us. (laughs) Wow. So you're you're playing music. You've been playing music your whole life, and you decided to make a move to Montreal because why? I, I just had an ins- I had gone to McGill in the 90s, and God, that's a long time ago. Um, and I loved Montreal. I'd moved back to Vancouver for five years. That's where I studied jazz and really, really got my feet wet in the music in the music business. Okay. Um, and then I just had an instinct to come back to Montreal. I just felt like it was going to be the right place for me to meet musicians, to feel to just get into the culture and it's it's been an incredible journey for me to be here for 10 years listen listen to this because this to me is amazing now when we talk to people here when we have artists who come in i mean these are typically people who are attached to record labels they have agents and we get called and you know someone's gonna be playing in town and we do the interview you don't have an agent you don't have management you don't have a record label actually the record label you have is your own record label you have done this all the way entirely on your own I have. That's remarkable. I have. I mean, in this day and age? I know. (laughs) It's pretty crazy. I mean, certainly I've had some wonderful people I've worked with and who my musicians are amazing, and I have hired people along the way um, as contract workers, but I've never had a team behind me. I've always had a vision from day one, and... I visualized it, and it's 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 happening. So, what what was your vision? Was your vision I'm going to produce an album on my own, release it on my own, and become famous? Was that your vision? <laughs> Maybe at the beginning, when I was naive, the vision really was to make the best quality music I could. In this case, adult friendly kids music. And was that the goal from the outset? Always kids music? Was no, that what you wanted to do? I started off as a jazz musician. Okay. So I was playing in jazz clubs in Vancouver. I was working with um, Linton Garner, who was one of the, what his one of the greats actually he played with Ella Fitzgerald Sarah Vaughan Duke Ellington so I kind of you know he took me under his wing a little bit I played with him for quite a few years there and I had sort of the Diana Krall Nora Jones route in mind in my head and that's a great example of how sometimes life just puts you on a totally different path so while I was doing that I was writing music and I was writing adult music jazz and I was writing kids music and so I just was doing it all. I made a little tape of six kids' songs. I sent it to my cousin here in Montreal. She was six at the time. It was a tape from my four like track. A cassette? Yes. Wow. I, I guess that was about 10, 12 years ago, 10 years ago. And, um, and she called me back, her mom, and said, she has not stopped listening to us for two weeks. I, maybe you should consider doing something like that. Did you like think this. she was just being nice, perhaps, polite to you and no. saying, you know what, because... No, I had an or... instinct too, because I've always worked with kids. Okay. I've done music with kids. I've worked as a counselor. I did all kinds. So I always knew that kids, we had a connection together. So um, I just started writing them. And then when I moved to Montreal, I decided to put together a project of the kind of caliber that I would if it was a jazz album or a pop album for kids because that's so unlikely you know a lot of times people don't produce really high caliber music for kids mm-hmm. so i went out i i went to every jazz club in town i handpicked musicians and i i collected you know not just jazz players but world players and latin players and you know folk and all kinds of different you know multicultural um so you're independently influences. wealthy to have been able to afford to hire all these people no. <laughs> oh, I, we're, by the way, we're talking to Jennifer Gassoy, Montreal singer-songwriter. Uh, her album, Throw a Penny in the Wishing Well Kids album, now nominated for a Grammy. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I've been working the whole way through. I, making, making, you know, get, I've gotten a lot of support. I've gotten Canada Council grants. I got two really great um, factor grants for this last album. Um, so you figured out how to do that part. That's I figured part of that your out. business. Okay. Yeah. I, I certainly contributed. Um, my family has helped me as well. Like, I've had sort of help from... Uh, some sources, but I've also okay. been working the whole time as a musician. Now, let's talk about this. So that's one stage, and you end up producing something on your own. You come up with this album. The next thing you know, you blink. You're nominated for a Grammy. <laughs> How did the Grammy people even know this album existed? Well, I actually 
was I submitted my own album. On your own? I did. Well, you just sent him a copy of a CD? Well, there's a whole process, and, and I had to do a lot of research to figure it out. It took me a few years to sort of figure out how okay. I could even get in there. I, and, um, you know, I just, I just sort of... I was even scared to call. I didn't even know that I'd be able to... I didn't even know if the Grammys had a phone number because there's such a mystique around the Grammys, especially in Canada. We don't know how it works. Right. I still kind of don't know how it works. But I I certainly... I submitted the album and um, and all kinds of stuff happened and here I am. Okay, but now, so you submit the album. Obviously, yeah. they listen to it. I just figured they take it and, you know, say, okay, here's another one, throw it away. Yeah. Not from a major record label, from no one they know. No. Just an independent person in Montreal sent yes. along a CD. So you don't know what's going on other than you sent it, you submitted it. How do you find out you're nominated? How did you find out? Well, um, I found out because they were doing a nomination concert uh, last Friday night, and I knew that they were going to be announcing the nominees right after the concert at 11 o'clock. So you I were had, watching this on TV? I was watching it on TV, yeah. And I mean, I, I knew, you know, I knew enough that they were going to be um, announcing, they announced the, the eight big ones, the song of the year, the, you know, artist of the year. Right. But then there's a whole other, there's probably, like I think, 50 more, yeah. more, maybe 80 categories. So I... At you a, actually thought you had a shot at, at this? I did. I did. Wow. I did. Okay. Well, I, I had, you know, there's actually a whole, there is a process to it. So it wasn't completely out of the blue that... I was going to get nominated. There, there, there is a bit of a, a process to it, but I didn't really think that okay. I would seriously so be a contender. You, so you're watching the TV, you're watching the scroll now of all the people nominated, and, and what happened? Yeah. Did you get down to your so, category? Well, it was actually on the computer. So I had my fingers on the keyboard at 11 o'clock, and they, they put it on the Grammy website. So I'm scrolling down like... One, two, twenty, thirty, forty <laughs> categories. My heart was beating so fast, and finally, I get to my category: the children's album, well, best children's album. And I didn't see it on my screen. It was one, two, three, four. I didn't see my name, and I thought, no, nope, I didn't get it. And then I scrolled down, and it was like Willy Wonka and the Golden Ticket. It was like, oh my god, my name's on there. And wow. I kept scrolling and kept looking, and I was like. Am I seeing this right? And then my Facebook started going crazy and my Twitter, the phone, my texting. It was like Vegas. It was like slot machine. That's crazy. <laughs> and it, and Were you shaking? Were you... I was shaking. I'm still shaking. Like I, I haven't slept in four days. It's a great, great, great story. <laughs> Uh, do you get to go down to the, now that you're nominated, do you get to yeah. go down to the actual ceremony? Yes. I guess so, right? You bet. You get to sit in the audience, you got I, a gown and the I, whole deal. I'm, and... I'm going to walk the red carpet. That's I, so cool. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of press. I'm going to try and get some press there, hire a publicist. And... Because the, this, does that work to your advantage? For You mean for people to know who you are? Why would you get press there? Yeah, just so that I can I can start to build a name for myself in in LA okay. and you know why not why not if I can try and get on ET Canada or oh, I'm sure you will you know hey I'd love to be on the Strombo show I'm trying to get Gian Gameshi I no, haven't don't go for Gian Gameshi <laughs> everybody else just don't go for him that's okay that's a, <laughs> that's a personal reason but no uh, would you if this thing works out the way you want it to and it, you know if you end up winning would you consider moving to LA is that what you're kind of giving me the idea that you're um, going to do I'm not sure. You know what? I'm 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 not saying that yet. I'm okay. sort of just saying, you know, if I can get traction, I'm going to get traction. Good for you. We're going to come back. I want you. You brought in your ukulele. I, I did. love I love ukuleles. I bought one for no reason other than I thought one day I'd like to learn how to play it. I've never taken a lesson. It's still sitting in my house untouched, <laughs> but I will get a great amount of pleasure and I hopefully our listeners too uh, by having you play something from your uh, from your album. I would love to. Okay, so let's take a break first in traffic. Then we'll come back and listen to Jennifer Gasoy. Uh, one of the tracks from her Grammy-nominated kids' album, Throw a Penny in the Wishing Well. That's coming up. Jennifer Gassoy is here. She's nominated for a Grammy for Best Children's Album. Montrealer. Now we call her Montrealer. She's been here for 10 years. So what are we going to hear now? What are you going to play? Well, I think I'm going to have some fun here and do a, a, a crowd favorite. It's called I'm a Bubble. A crowd favorite. <laughs> All the little guys get together? Yeah. Okay. And this, I usually have bubbles. Oh, I cool. didn't bring my bubbles today. But That's okay. You can Imagine that she has bubbles. Exactly. And is playing this song. Here we go. Floating all day, floating far away, the thoughts of tomorrow, only of today. 
bop, 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 I'm a bobble, I'm a bobble, floating around without any sound, I'm a bobble, I'm a bobble, in a minute I'm gonna pop, 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 da, da, ba, da, 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 I can imagine, I'm just picturing little kids sitting there watching this and whatever, and every time you get to the word bubble, they yell, bubble! I don't know if that's what happens when you play. Oh, but this one, they go crazy. That's such a they cool song. It. Jennifer, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you so uh, much for having me. And best of luck to you at the Grammys. We'll keep our fingers crossed for you. Make sure if we can uh, let people know if you do win. Thank you so, so much. And have a great time down there. Thanks so much.